English short hand dictation number 51 dictation speed 140 words per minute ready start it is a pleasure and privilege to welcome the honorable prime minister of india and the honorable chief justice of india to this joint conference i extend my warm welcome to the distinguished judges of the supreme court chief ministers chief justices of the high courts and other dignitaries also who have joined us today to deliberate upon the pressing issues facing the justice delivery system in the country the fact that this conference is being held within a span of one year after the last conference reflects the commitment of the government and the judiciary to move ahead at a faster pace towards providing timely affordable and quality justice to the citizens of this great nation i would like to thank the honorable chief justice of india for wholeheartedly supporting us in this initiative the high courts and the state governments have a major role to play in the development of judicial administration in the states recognizing this fact a landmark resolution was adopted in the last conference wherein it was decided that the chief justices of the high courts and the chief ministers of the states would institute a mechanism for regular interaction amongst themselves to resolve the issues relating to infrastructure and manpower needs and facilities for the judiciary i am sure that in most of the states such a mechanism has already been instituted and this conference would provide us the perfect opportunity to deliberate upon ways and means to take this initiative forward as per information available with us the central government and the state governments have together spent on an average a sum of about rupees 2000 crore per annum during the last 3 years on development of judicial infrastructure i am glad to inform this august gathering that the overall availability of the court halls now matches the king strength of around 16000 judges and judicial officers in the subordinate judiciary with a number of projects in hand we are aiming at 20000 court halls in the near future to match the availability with sanctioned strength in every state while notable progress has been made on judicial infrastructure front the same cannot be said about availability of judicial manpower despite considerable increase in the sanctioned strength of the high courts and the district courts in the recent past the persistence of a large number of vacancies of judges and judicial officers is an area of concern i would urge the high courts to adopt a proactive approach in selection of the suitable candidates for various judicial positions as you are aware the protracted nature of litigation in the country has an adverse impact on investor sentiments in order to assuage these concerns and as part of the government's continuous efforts to forge investor friendly environment in the country the government has initiated a number of steps including setting up of commercial courts and amendments to arbitration and conciliation act 1996 and the negotiable instruments act 18 1881 these initiatives are intrinsically linked to speeding up the dispute resolution processes both within the formal court system as well as under alternative dispute resolution mechanisms concerns regarding the inordinate delays in the conclusion of the criminal trials have been expressed by various parliamentary committees the government has over the years established expert committees to review the criminal justice system in order to make it more responsive to the needs of the society some of the recommendations of these committees have been implemented and legislative provisions incorporated in the procedural laws however legislative reforms alone are not sufficient efficient reforms in policing and investigative mechanisms are as important as reforms in court processes law commission of india is now reviewing both substantive and procedural aspects of our criminal justice system i have requested the chairman of law commission to expedite their recommendations in this regard as per data compiled by the national crime records bureau at the end of 2014 there were about 2.82 lack under trial prisoners in the jails which constituted 2/3 of the total inmates i understand during the early years after our independence the under trial prisoners constituted only 1/3 of the total prisoners in jails this situation prevails despite
appropriate amendments in criminal procedure code prescribing for release of under trial prisoners on personal bond who have spent half of their maximum sentence i would urge the state governments and chief justices of the high courts to take appropriate steps to ensure that this provision is implemented expeditiously the e court integrated mission mode project was launched with the objective of improving access to justice with the help of technology phase 1 of the e court project witnessed significant results which include ict infrastructure upgradation of subordinate courts launch of a national e court portal and constitution of process reengineering committees by the high courts phase 2 currently in progress aims at setting up of centralized filing centers digitization of documents adoption of document management systems creation of e filing and e payment gateways however there is lack of awareness about the potential of e court project among the judges as well as public at large i would urge upon chief justices of high courts to not only sensitize the members of the judiciary to utilize full potential of technological advancements being made but at the same time disseminate necessary information about litigant friendly services being provided under the project to public at large at present the national judicial data grid provides summary of pending and disposed cases at the district and subordinate court level however in addition periodic reports on the courts in a format that allows for the assessment of judicial productivity and congestion rates must also be published categorization and assignment of cases through case management system will help to ensure that the old matters are disposed on priority basis grouping of cases needs to be undertaken as ongoing continuous exercise so that cases arising out of the same subject matter and involving the same question of law can be assigned to one judge an improved categorization will enable courts to adhere to predecided timelines in this regard rules of high courts could be suitably amended to incorporate these mechanisms although several important and innovative initiatives are in place to improve upon the existing court processes yet there is significant room for further work in this regard the high courts must take a strong leadership role in actively promoting a shift towards higher efficiency in the implementation of the project further research in the area of process simplification should also be encouraged to assess if the litigants are benefiting from various initiatives and to assess what else could be done ICT initiatives if successfully completed will ease the day to day management of court processes and provide necessary tools to the higher judiciary for performance appraisal of subordinate courts The bar in India plays an important role in our judicial processes including alternative dispute resolution mechanisms. We must continuously engage with the bar for improving their standards and practices as also for upgrading their professional skills through continued legal education. In this regard I must appreciate the efforts of Bar Council of India in establishing first lawyers academy at Kochi in Kerala. I hope other states would also facilitate their respective state bar councils. in such an endeavor it is also necessary that adequate facilities are provided for the members of the bar while designing the infrastructure for the courts the bar council has also expressed keen interest in taking higher responsibilities under legal aid programs keeping in mind the critical importance of cooperation from bar i would urge upon the state governments and the high courts to actively engage the members of the state bar councils and bar associations in enlisting their support for the various programs and initiatives towards reduction of pendency in courts the exercise of policy formulation on judicial reforms by the government as well as judiciary needs proper analysis and research based on reliable judicial statistics with the computerization of the high courts and district and subordinate courts it has now become possible for the high courts to disseminate necessary information on the functioning of justice delivery system the government on its part has formulated a scheme on action research on judicial reforms encouraging law schools 
judicial academies and management and technical institutions to take up research projects to assess the effectiveness of judicial reform measures and assess the feasibility of introducing new reforms 18 research projects have been sanctioned under the scheme so far and i would request the chief justices to facilitate these research projects in their respective high courts